One of my goals when I turned 30 was to be a little bit selfish every single day. You might be thinking, what do you mean by that? Well, I want to dedicate 30 minutes a day just for me. Whether it's binge watching my favorite K-drama, taking a long bath, reading a book, or working out. 30 minutes a day just for myself to reset and refocus. Another goal I have for this channel is to share more authentic dishes and what I actually eat on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of times it's just eating whatever I have in the fridge, especially on Mondays before I go grocery shopping. And the best way to use up all ingredients is to make fried rice. Today I'm making traditional Taiwanese-inspired cabbage fried rice, which is seriously so good. Pan fry bacon until crispy and golden brown. You can also use other proteins such as spam or pork belly. Next, add a white press of the green onion and sliced carrots. Saute for 2-3 to three minutes then add in chopped cabbage. Season with white pepper and soy sauce. Cover and let it cook for 4-5 to five minutes on medium heat. After, the cabbage should be a lot softer and release its juices. Add in leftover cold-cooked rice and saute on high heat for another 2-3 to three minutes before adding in the rest of the green onion. Now look at that! I also had some leftover tofu in the fridge, so I wanted to make a spicy garlic sauce to go with it. Add in chili oil, green onion, sesame seeds, soy sauce, and vegetarian oyster sauce. Drizzle the sauce on top of the tofu and garnish with green onion. Now brunch is served. Mmm, this looks so good and this is just all the random ingredients I have in the fridge. Mmm, it's so good. The rice soaks up all the delicious goodness from the bacon and the cabbage. It's honestly delicious. Mm. And I normally always order silken tofu when I'm at Taiwanese street stalls. And I was like, you know what? This takes five minutes. Why not? Mm. So refreshing. And I'm going to be making this more often now because it's so easy. Mm. While editing, I got a very special delivery, which was my book place to sign. I still can't believe that after three years of hard work, my first cookbook is coming out in less than a week. I know I say this a lot, but honestly, thank you so, so, so much for your support. Your love and support has honestly helped me through some of the toughest times of my life, and I'm forever grateful to have this opportunity to not only write a cookbook featuring my recipes, but also family recipes passed down from generations. I cannot wait for you to see it in person. For dinner, I was craving spicy food, so let's make one of my favorite easy dinner, mala shangguo, spicy mala dry pot, which is basically a stir fried version of a hot pot. You can literally customize it with any ingredients you like. I usually like to add in a lot of veggies and protein, so Dom can also eat it for lunch the next day. All you have to do is blanch up all the ingredients individually until they're 80% cooked. Someone to move. 
In a separate bowl, add a green onion, lots of garlic, dry red chili, Sichuan peppercorn, and spicy doban jang. Saute for two to three minutes or until fragrant. Your house should be smelling super yummy but super spicy right now. Next, add in your favorite spicy hot pot soup base and mix until everything is combined. Then all you have to do is add back all the blanched ingredients and saute everything together for another 3-5 to five minutes on high heat. I've been doing Pilates two times a week for the past year, and honestly, it's been the best self-care routine I've added to my life. For a long time when I think about working out, I think of losing weight, and when I don't see any results, it demotivates me and makes me want to quit. In fact, it took me so long to post online because I used to be so subconscious about my body that I have tried every single crazy diet you can think of. But honestly, we only have one body and one of my favorite quotes is, work out because you love your body, not because you hate it. I love that after Pilates, I feel strong, happy and healthy and really that's all that matters. For brunch today, I'm making a simple Japanese-inspired breakfast using similar ingredients in different dishes. I love mackerel, but I hate the smell when I pan fry it, so my go-to lately has been to air fry it. Make slits along the fish and salt and pepper both sides. Air fry at 400 for 10 minutes, flipping halfway through. In the meantime, let's quickly make a vegetable-packed miso soup. Add in daikon, napa cabbage, silken tofu, and dashi powder. Let it simmer for around 5 minutes and add in miso paste. Simmer for another 5 minutes and add in green onion. The second half of the daikon, I decided to grate it and squeeze out all the excess water to be paired with the mackerel in the cold tofu dish. Drizzle dashi soy sauce and top with the rest of the green onion. Now we got the perfect healthy brunch. This looks so good. I was literally craving this. Not gonna lie, I am starving. After that Pilates class, that was so hard. Mackerel and rice always hits the spot. Mm. Today is actually a filming day, which means I most likely am not gonna be able to eat dinner until pretty late. And normally days like this, I like to have a really big lunch. That one fills me up and I'm not hungry the whole time. Mm. I'm really on a cold tofu kick recently. It's so good. It's so refreshing. Also, if you like mackerel like me, but you hate dealing with like the cleanup and the mess and the oil splatter, make it in the air fryer and thank me later. The skin gets super, super crispy and it's perfect every single time. Um, I also love natto. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's really, really good. I had it for the first time in Japan last year with Kimono Mom Mo, and it got me hooked. And I always have this for breakfast. It's so good. Oof. I like mine with extra mustard and a little bit of wasabi. Mm. I'm 
For brunch, I was craving fluffy pancakes. I'll be the first to admit that I am so bad at making desserts. Maybe it's the precise measurements or the crazy amount of steps and dishes it requires to make it, but I'm just not good at it. But I was really, really craving pancakes, so I decided to give it a try. I tested out a few different ratios between each batches. Some had more baking powder, some used more cream instead of milk. The hardest part about making dessert is that you really don't find out the results until the end, and I guess that's really the behind the scenes of a recipe development stage. Overall, my goal was to make a super fluffy pancake that was easy for someone who also hates making desserts. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I may have found the perfect recipe. Comment down below if you want to see it and if I should film a video for it. It tastes like a massive dorayaki, right? It really does. It's so good. It tastes like cake. <laughs> we actually tested three different batches, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. And if, let me guys know if you guys want a recipe, because like, maybe I can do a recipe on this. But it's really easy. Like, look. It's so bouncy and soft. And honestly, it tastes even really good once it cools down. It's kind of like cake. Mm. For Valentine's this year, we decided to stay in and cook everything ourselves. What is better than drinking wine and cooking together? I like to first slice and prep all the ingredients so that way when we're putting everything together, it is super quick. The first dish I'm making is my creamy Japanese mushroom risotto. The key to making risotto is to be patient. It is a lengthy process that you cannot rush, but trust me, it is so worth it. Here are a few simple tips to a fail-proof risotto. Tip number one, heat your stock ahead of time. Make sure to not use cold stock as it will cool everything down, which can interfere with the cooking process. I'm using dashi stock today. Tip number two, use a wide pot. This will help cook everything evenly. Tip number three, cook the mushroom without any oil and only soy sauce. This will help bring out the fragrance in the mushroom. Next, add an oil and shallots and saute for two to three minutes, then add in the rice. Toss well, making sure all the rice soaks up the oil and the sake. Tip number four, don't add too much stock at once. Add in the stock ladle by ladle. You don't want to turn the risotto into kanji. Make sure to also not have your pot too hot as it can burn quickly, and not too low as it will then turn the risotto soggy. Medium heat is perfect. Finally, tip number five, don't overcook it. You want the risotto to be al dente around 95% cooked. Once the rice is al dente, add in one fourth cup of cream and black pepper to taste. Mix well and turn off the heat and add in cold butter, Parmesan cheese, and fresh chives. Mix and serve immediately. Taste test time. This looks so good. Mmm. How is it? Oh. It's so good. Yeah? Wow. Next, I'm making crispy Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. Add in oil, salt and pepper, garlic powder, Parmesan cheese, and lemon zest. Toss well and air fry at 400 for 15 minutes. Finish off with Parmesan cheese and you got the perfect crispy Brussels sprouts. 
Another side dish I'm making is shishito peppers. Add an oil, salt, and toss well. Air fry at 400 for seven minutes, making sure to toss halfway through. While we air fry, let's make the sauce. Add in soy sauce, honey, sesame oil, lemon zest, and yuzu extract. Drizzle on the sauce and that's it. Before we make the steak, let's quickly make some mussels. Melt lots of butter and add in garlic and shallot. Then add in red chili for the nice kick. Add in time to season the butter and add in the mussels. Pour in white wine and lemon zest. Mix well, cover and cook until the mussels have opened. This is seriously so good and so easy. Please, please, please give it a try. Dom is then finishing off with some steak. I swear nothing tastes better than homemade steak. Sometimes I get people asking me, how come Dom doesn't cook for himself? Well, that's because food is my love language and I love cooking for people I love. I even love cooking for myself. I know this video is a little bit different from my normal what I eat in a day, but I hope to share a little bit more of my life and be more authentic and myself. I hope to share my love for food with you and I hope to inspire you to also take a moment to yourself every single day.